All right, how's everybody doing? So I got this valve here and um, this rear port, I don't know if I can get my finger in there, right there, that rear port is leaking through the O-ring. Um, I took the cap off and the spool is all just rusted right up. And that is the, the valve that we actually used for the plow. Um, so this is set up with a three spool valve here. Um, so we got three cables coming in. Uh, one is the plow up and down, one is for plow left and right, and one is for a dump body up and down. Uh, this truck does not have a dump body on it, it has a sander on it. Um, the left and right we don't really use because we don't have any plows that do that. And the up and down is pretty much the only one that we use, at least on this truck. So I got another three spool valve, or another valve pack, you have to assemble it. and. Uh, we do anticipate getting some power reverse plows or hydraulic angling plows, however you want to call it. I think they call power reverse. Um, so we want to replace this with what we have. Um, so the hard part is actually getting these fittings loose. They are all pretty rotted. I, I had to heat that one up with a torch just to get it to spin. And really it could use new hoses everywhere, but I'm gonna see what I can get apart and what's functional still. Uh, the big line right there is a return line. There's really no pressure on that at all. Um, so the only real main ones that I'm concerned with is like I say, the return line, this the second line here, that's a pressure out, I believe, or a return from something else. I'm not exactly sure which, what that one is because the way this works is the pump, pumps in here through this line this is the pressure line it goes through you can do your functions with this and then it runs out and it goes and powers the sander controls which power the hydraulic motors and stuff that are all over the, the sander so pretty much everything goes through it so I can't even really disable it in case we needed to but anyway so like I say I'm gonna, I'm gonna replace it but uh this is kind of what I'm dealing with everything's pretty much rotted except for a couple of lines uh, that pressure line did come loose so my main concern is like I say this pressure line this line right here for the plow lift um, this line out here and then the return lines these other five um, if I can get them apart I'll get them apart if not I might just keep them disconnected for now and I'll put caps in there because if if they break then I'm gonna have to put new lines in because the lines I believe are specific to the fittings that you have, you can't just go crimping everything or whatever, I think, anyway. I could be wrong about that. But if I gotta, if those break coming off, I'm gonna have to replace them anyway, so I'm just gonna leave them disconnected and put caps in until we need the other, the other valves. And I'm gonna hook up this guy right here. So I managed to get these two front bolts out. I just uh, kinda heated up the, uh, the bracket here and uh, vibrated them with the air hammer a little bit just to uh, free it up in there and then I just heated that up down here with uh, the torch and just kind of work the wrench back and forth slowly I mean a little pressure here back and forth back and forth back well don't try to just break it right loose because it'll it'll usually break off um, so we're kind of rotted there a little bit rotted. The back one I'm not going to be able to get off the same way. You can see, uh, or you can almost see that that's a bolt. So right there, that's the bolt. So what I'm going to do is down here in that groove there, I'm just going to cut the bolt and I'm going to leave the uh, half of it sticking out and then pull the valve off and then I'm going to get it with some vice grips or pliers and just heat up that lower plate just like I did with the other ones and then work it out because I'm not gonna, I don't have a, there isn't a bolt head there to really get on, so I'm not even gonna mess with it. I would try to record it for you, but I don't have my GoPro, I'm doing this with my cell phone, I'm just trying to get as much as I can, but I can't, I can't record that and, and do it at the same time, so. Baby steps. All right, I actually got all them hoses off. They're uh, not super bad, not super bad. Uh, ceiling services are good. 
just was all kind of rusty in there. But I don't know. Like I said, we don't really use them so much as this one. This one was replaced not that long ago. That one actually came right apart. So, so that's what I want to use aside from replacing hundreds of dollars with the hoses just so they can sit there and rot out like the last ones did. And I'm just gonna probably cap them off or maybe I'll put these on just to keep the keep the place or whatever. But so I got these all off. Everything's loose. The valve's loose. I just have to get these uh what do they call them bonnets. Um, I got new bonnets or these sections here they screw they thread onto the uh, the cables here um, so yeah I get these Allen Allen cap screws out and then this will slide back or I might have to actually use the adjuster nut and, and back them off onto the the, um, the threaded section here and then underneath there'll be a, a pin on like a little fork that goes over the the valve the, the end of the spool and then um, so it kind of forks around there with like a clevis and a pin goes through and a, either uh, either a uh, hairpin clip or a cotter pin goes in the bottom I think it's a cotter pin but I'm not I don't remember but like I say I gotta get, gotta get them off first and then uh, then we'll have the valve free basically I just got to finish turning out that uh, return line there and I'm going to take it down and I get all the fittings because all the valve sections I got don't have any of the fittings with it. They're just blank valve sections. So I got to get all the caps and everything and then uh, I'm gonna put it together. All right, so I got these uh, adjusters adjusted up. And then that's the, uh, the attachment that they have. So it is a cotter pin. I pull that cotter pin out and uh, take the little clevis pin out. And then this will come right off. And I got to do the same the other ones and hope they come apart that one's already almost there so yeah it'll take a little bit more effort uh, i have changed this one already in the past i hadn't changed those two because this one i think uh this bracket here broke so when you when you went to push where it pushed the the valve in it uh just kind of pulled the cable away so i swapped out just that in the past but the stuff's kind of pricey. I think the valve and the bonnets were like $1,900. So it is expensive. So when you want to say, we'll just change it all, uh, it, it does add up pretty quick. So that's kind of how that is. So let me get these all off and then we'll pull this valve off and we'll get some more fittings. And then we'll uh, assemble the other one. Well, I got it all off. Got the bolt out, made it up, everything's apart. So I'm gonna needle scale this plate if I want to bolt the, uh, the other part back down on it, or the other valve on it, and uh, yeah. So I'll show you why the needle scaler is my favorite tool. So, works pretty good. Takes all that scale right off. Uh, it's better if you have a direct shot at it as opposed to the angle I was at, but I was trying to get under the fender. So, 
I was limited with my space. You do want to be careful with thin stuff because it can blow a hole right through. So I'm not going to do the rest of it. I'm just doing that top plate for the valve. Um, the rest of this tank's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty rusty. So I'm sure that'll be next. So, so here's an up close and personal view of, uh, of this valve. Pretty, uh, pretty rusty. And there's the new valve. And a couple of pieces here. So we got like the end cap, um, the spools, or the valve components. This one is a double acting spool spring center. So I got two double acting, one single acting. I don't know why they gave me the single acting. So everything on this is double acting. I just, I gave him the VIN number and the truck was built at that place. So they were able to tell me what valve they put on. They were probably supposed to put a single acting and they put double actings. The double acting is actually cheaper than the single acting. So it's like, why would you just give me all double acting? But anyway, it doesn't really matter. So this works as a single acting. This is the, the plow up and down. All up and right, body up and down. You can see how it's capped off. All right, so I was trying to figure out, I was pretty sure that these were O-ring boss fittings, but I just wanted to verify, because I gotta go get all these. So, I didn't have the right wrench for these fittings, so I ended up just using the, uh, the air hammer with a chisel bit on it. And you just kind of come in here like so and just vibrate on it and get a little groove worn into it and then you can kind of turn it and then hammer them out that's how i got uh that's how i got all these loose <clears throat> you can see the, the little groove in them where i got them turning they're all in there pretty tight but uh yeah so basically just doing that i got them all loose I mean, except for the plugs but i mean I just need that size plug. Hopefully they have them. So that's how I got the, uh, the fittings out. This valve gets all assembled. Start with our end cap here. So the end cap with a pressure release. So that's the uh, the uh, high pressure bypass. To these. Take our O-rings, which I don't completely understand why, as much as this valve costs, they give you round O-rings instead of square ones that actually go in the square holes. Well, it looks like you get the round ones in there just fine. Maybe that's why.
So all those spool ends <clears throat> were towards the pressure relief valve. Can't get it. Can't get it open. There we go. So those are the valves. Here's the end cap. Threaded. Now I want to be careful not to disturb these because I don't want those O-rings to get pulled out and then not seat right because then we'll have a problem. These bolt heads are 916 so I'm just coming underneath and I'm just tightening them and then like kind of pulling them together that way and then I'll get them snug at least two of them and then uh, then I'll flip it down and we'll tighten them up. All right so this valve I guess is a DVA 20 is what it comes out to be. It's a Parker valve, although it's from like some other company. Not sure the exact name, but so you want to make sure the feet are flat. Providing this table's flat. Huh. Anyway, so these bolts get torqued to uh, 350 inch pounds or 29 foot pounds. Look to that. It's a big end here. These are all sixteen, uh, sixteen O ring, yeah, O ring boss or O rings. Ceiling, straight thread, O-ring. Number 16 to 16. I'm gonna put some plugs in here. I think this the end the intakes is 16 as well, and these are 12s. So let me go get the wrenches and such that I need.
voila just like the other one so there's our original and there's a new one anyway so take this over there bolt it down hook the hoses up hook up the uh, cables and should be adequately done all right so this is kind of how this works pretty much you just thread the adjuster on and then you can get the uh the little clevis on there we'll try to move all this Take our little bonnet thing, I guess they call it. I thread that down. Thread this back over the top. Let me bolt these down to the Allen bolts there. Let me take and put our adjuster nut, lock it in, and this is how you adjust your lever so it's in the center. So I got the other three on. The same way you uh you can't get these off over this. You have to take them off to get that off. So you keep that in mind if you're changing them. So you gotta thread them on to access it and then you can thread them off. So here's the kit they give you, or they gave me. Comes with uh, the bonnet, the little clevis bracket, pin, cotter pin, long nuts and bolts the uh, jam nut and uh, new allen bolts. Look at that spun back. I'm all kind of come in here and see if I can get behind it. In there behind the back nut. Spin, spin the bracket, and the nut's pretty much captured in the bracket, and then just spin it right off, and then the, the nut will drop off. Like so. this end off I realize I put it on that tight Sees, put some of that on there. That's going to make a big difference.
Take a pieces and go like this. Like that. Thread them on. You could change that nut if you want, but I'm not going to. There's that. Still has the, the nut on the end there. So. little hook in the nut slide it in there just hold it in the middle like I'll put my finger on it and just turn it on the end and get it started turn that till it's tight in here to the back side of the rear jam nut and just tighten it while holding the pliers there's that I gotta squeeze that in a little bit I can't see too much. And that's how that looks. So we'll put our cotter pin in there. I've got the levers uh, bungee corded forward so it pushes them out. So basically, I mean, if you let them go to neutral, it'll be like here. So that's why it's sticking out as much as it is, is because I've got them kind of pushed out. All right. the longer bolt I'll we'll never seize on it
caught on the edge of this uh, the inlet section, and it wasn't it wasn't going in all the way. Now that it is, I go recheck my my lever. Should really just be the same as the other ones. Almost done. We gotta hook up our hoses. Well, that is that. So we're all hooked back up. So I gotta try it out, make sure everything's functioning. So little ooh ah hoses everywhere. No, so, that's that. I just gotta pick up my uh, incredible mess that's everywhere. So yeah. So, I don't know how many people watch to the end, but I got a new light, which the Snap-on guy brought by. Clean it off for you, spit shine it up. Uh, this is what it is. So, same type of magnetic thing, bigger. The only thing I don't super like about it is it's, it's a lot heavier than the magnets like. Like, it sticks to things. And it's stuck to that back of the cab. I mean, it, it sticks there, but I don't know how well it would go upside down. Eh, I guess it's all right. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's not bad. It does. It has different brightnesses as well, so it'll get brighter or dimmer. It remembers the the brightness it was at, I believe. Uh, this is a USB-C plug, so I can't use the same plug I used for the other ones. i got to keep swapping back and forth. But I mean, the first one I had had a problem. It didn't want to charge, um, and they exchanged it out for this one. This one actually had a problem with it right away as well. It didn't... I think this one didn't want to charge either. But it didn't want to do anything. Like, the other one, I'd plug the, I would plug the, the cord into it, and it would charge... For days, and I turn it on, it would shut off in 10 seconds, and it would flash red. This one didn't want to charge, and then I just left it plugged in, and then it charged, and it's been working since then. So it's kind of a little weird, weird thing. So I guess buyer beware. I have not had the greatest luck. I mean, it's worked since then, but I mean, there's something up with these. But anyway, it's still I don't use it as much as I use my little ones, just because. These ones are just, I mean, they're a lot smaller. They're a lot handier. You can put them in more places. They stick better because they weigh a lot less. I mean, this thing probably weighs two or three times what this one weighs. I just got it because I figured the battery would last longer and it's a little brighter. I thought it would do a bigger area. But, uh, so anyway, it's kind of something there in case you're interested. So that's about how I hacked that together. Um, yeah. So, anyway, hope that could help somebody. Thanks for watching.